January 6, 2021. It'll, you will remember the day you were in Washington, D.C. And, and saw the riots that happened. It was all because of President Biden. It was because Trump had the idea. Now, a year later, it's still being blamed. Federal, even if you don't remember, you were there. Tonight, a special Give Me a Break all about the Capitol riot. We're going to tell you about the arrests, what people are charged for, So what that means is you need to make sure but things have to happen. But first, let's get to our local COVID cases. Five point four over five million. Seventy six thousand eight hundred and eighty one in the state of Texas. Over sixty eight thousand in Oasis County went with thirteen hundred deaths. Twenty four point three percent of tests been positive, positive test four to three percent. One point six percent test been six million tests been taken. Twenty one thousand eight hundred and fifty six people in ICU and one hundred and twenty three people have been hospitalized. Six seven point seven percent have had at least one dose of the vaccination and fifty five point seven point five percent are vaccinated. Sixteen point six and nineteen point six. What about our schools? How are they holding up against COVID? <laughs> Nothing yet. We're still at the same as Friday. But they got to pull themselves together. I mean, we have to make sure this doesn't happen again. But still, if you haven't gotten vaccinated, make sure you get vaccinated. I recommend getting the Pfizer vaccine. Good vaccine. If your child's, if your child's five years old and able to get the vaccine, okay. If you have questions about it, feel free to look up the side effects or ask your doctor. Ask your doctor about it. In the meantime, you need to make sure that your masks are very important, especially up the nose, not down here, nowhere down here. Social distance, six feet or more. It's very, very important to use social distance. If you come across some somebody vaccinated, just ask them politely, excuse me, have you been vaccinated? Six feet, please. Because if you're because you're vaccinated, you come across unvaccinated, just tell them politely, I need you to take put on your mask. Put on your mask and stay six feet. If your school is able to do four feet, okay. Hand washing, very extremely very important. You need to make sure you wash your hands every day. So I guess what basically needs to happen here is that wash your hands. 20 seconds. Hot water. Kills, it'll stop the spread of germs. If you're sick, stay home. If you're sick at work, let your manager know, but you have to provide an excuse.
So what? Ba so also, if you're running a plane or transportation, you need to make sure that you got to make sure that you're doing the same thing. If you're under two, no masks. If you have a medical condition where you can you can't wear a mask, you need to let them know beforehand so that they can they, they understand. It's understand. They say no stuck up on the mask. You need to put on that mask. Period. What's the best type of mask you can use to protect yourself against Omicron variant? I would believe it would be an N95. My boss has an N95 mask. It's not like those like little cloth things. I mean. I mean, it's the best thing to find Omicron, those N95 masks. You can find them at Walmart. You can find them at the Home Depot. CVS, Walgreens, Lowe's, something like that. But the best mask I recommend is the N95. If, you're, if your work does not allow it, just say, well, it's to fight against Omicron variant. Those masks do no good. Unless you want to fight, argue with your boss, then it's your choice. Next, our Gimme Rick special on the riots. I'm going to give you a list of the people who have been arrested, as well as the very latest on this special. We'll be right back. On to the special. Now, what I'm going to do is give you a list of people who have been arrested. This is this is from USA Today. They gathered the details of those cases, and the FBI used to find people who were responsible for the attack. But we're going to give you a list. 702. James Robert Elliott, who was charged with civil disorder, assaulting, resisting, or attempting certain officers with certain weapon, entering or and remaining, and remaining in a restricted building or grounds with a deadly and dangerous weapon. Disorderly conduct in a restricted building or grounds with a deadly and dangerous weapon engaged in physical violence. Act of physical violence in the capital grounds of the building. Freedom of ivory. Entering and remaining in a restricted building or grounds. Violent entry disorderly conduct. Lucas Denny. He was charged with physical violence in a restricted building or grounds. Violent entry disorderly conduct. Paul Lee Samir Jr. His charge, entering and remaining in a restricted building or grounds, has two counts of that, and two counts of violent entry and disorderly conduct. Brent John Aldridge. I'm not going to give you an I'm just going to give you the charges. Entering and remaining restricted building grounds, disorderly, disorderly conduct. Disorderly conduct in the Capitol building, like two counts of disorderly conduct. Mainly, Jeffrey, mainly a lot of these people have been charged with entering and remaining in a restricted building, disorderly disruptive conduct, and disorderly conduct. Two counts of it. Entering and remaining in a restricted building or grounds, disorderly disruptive conduct, like two counts of disorderly conduct in the building. Jonas Buxton, same thing as the others, charged with disorderly conduct and parting and demonstrating or part or picketing in the Capitol building. Boy Nelson Banquet, he's he's charged with the same thing and disorderly conduct in the Capitol grounds with the obstruction of an official official proceeding. Donald Hazer, he's got quite a quite a rap sheet on him. Assaulting, resisting, or impending certain officers, violent injury, civil disorder, obstruction of official proceeding, conspiracy to obstruct an official proceeding, entering and remaining in a restricted building or grounds, resulting in significant bodily injury, disorderly conduct in a restricted building, engaging in physical violence, disorderly conduct in the Capitol building, like two counts, and pardoning them to picking in the Capitol building. Unlawful injury for Brian Haley, he was charged for disorderly conduct in the Capitol grounds. He was, and Justin was charged for result, assault, resist, for assault, obstruct, 
obstruct an officer, and to remain, and physical violence. Mark Cullis, charged for parading, demonstrating picketing in the Capitol building. I mean, a lot of these people have been charged with the same thing. Well, we're not getting into more than that, but if you guys want to feed the whole list, I'll find a link in the description. But what was the cause of the riot? The, call, the cause of it was a call to action by Trump. The House of his supporters gathered in Washington, D.C. on January 5th and 6th to support his false claim that the 2020 election had been stolen by a embattled radical left Democrats and to demand that Vice President Mike Pence and Congress reject Biden's victory. And now, four days, four days later, they're still misunderstanding what caused it. Like the studies. The studies have shown that Americans assume more partisan population exists only does. 75% of Republicans said racism still exists in America. That's 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 in the 2018 poll. It's all because of racism. And four days ago, NPR published five takeaways from the count of Ryan, not criminal cases one year later. Like, the alleged rioters came from all over, and most were relatively none. Yeah, at least 46 states, plus District of Columbia so far. Like, from Nebraska to Dakota, Vermont, Vermont appear to have been charged. A quarter of those charged are accused of physical violence. A quarter. And some of them, I just mentioned, the Capitol, like the Capitol Police Sergeant was present for some of those violent clashes that didn't even told Congress. What we were stumped to do that day was like something from a medieval battle. Many of the familiar appear to have military police backgrounds. But according to the April 21 report by George, Wa George Washington University program, riders with military experience were about four times more likely to be a part of the far fight. She was just both keepers. Judges have also made it clear that the allegations, like, like, this, like, Scott pleaded guilty to the allegations he shoved and punched a police officer. And, you know, what patriots do. We effing disarmed them and we stormed the blanking capital. And Judge Warsh sends, and the judge sends him to three and a half years in prison, one of the lengthest prison terms so far. Does they're in jail in a written trial, but some have been there for nearly a year. 26 have been there for nearly a year since January and February of 2021. But so far, there's been 74 sentences, and they were varied widely. But during that time, we'll... We'll probably continue looking into this. But there's conspiracy, and we'll tell you about that next. We're talking about the riots that happened one year ago. It was accused by former President Donald Trump responsible for minimizing the mob's violence, casting the rioters and majors false herds of the insurrection. Like January 6th, while substantiating Trump's unfounded claims about the free and fair election in 2020 that he lost. This was the claim. The rioters weren't Trump's supporters. This was from uh, Laura Ingram at the Fox News. He's in that January 6th morning, Trump's making Mary great against someone that were likely not all Trump supporters. And there were some reports that anti-sympathers may have been sprinkled throughout the crowd. But Cars but Clarson came on the show, but Fox but this the other Fox host claimed that on the show that in potentially every single case they were FBI operatives. And there was another claim. Trump did not encourage the rioters. The big protest in January 6th, Trump treated it on 
the 19th of December, be where, be there will be wild. Trump says, he, he said he wasn't even involved in it, but according to the survey last year by the Associated Press, two-thirds of Americans believe Trump bears some responsibility. There was another claim. This 35-year-old was unarmed, and the investigation included officer to wrongdoing. The suspect's test prisoners are not threatened. No, they're not. Those were now that's what that's all the claims. That's all the things I that I have so far. But history does repeat to repeat itself. And there's plenty of people saying, stop calling January 6th an insurrection. But we're gonna keep looking into the story, and probably in the near future we'll have a. Probably in the near future we'll have another. We'll, have, we'll give you a. We'll give you more as this uh, goes. And speaking of riots, there. I mean. And uh, speaking of getting off the topic of riots, there's been more threats in our in our local schools. Now, to give you a clear reminder. After the November 30th shooting, there's been a lot of threats going on on social media in local schools that say about bringing a gun to school. And on Saturday, law enforcement has found juveniles they believe threatened a school in Hayward Courts High School, according to GoErie.com. Charges might be coming up against juveniles who threatened the shooting at a junior senior high school in Lawrence Park on Monday afternoon. Law enforcement officials later determined that the threat was not credible. They posted on the website on Monday. The school was locked down until the threat was assumed by the police were in the building until students were dismissed. And three days ago, KX News. Two juveniles were arrested after making a Snapchat threat towards the high school. This was at Wednesday, 4 p.m. Wednesday. School officers were told about the Snapchat threat. This caption, don't go to school tomorrow. And again, in the journal news, cases are pending for three teens who were accused of making threats against Butler County schools. A 13-year-old girl was charged by Helen's police with aggravated menace, menacing a misdemeanor. She's accused of writing a threat on the bathroom wall, which is graffiti and vandalism. This happened on September, December 14th. She remains housed in the Butler County Juvenile Detention Center pending a court hearing this month. So we'll learn more about this. On December 19th, a 13-year-old girl in Lotka School was charged by the Butler County Sheriff's Office for making terroristic threats, which is a third-degree felony. She meant to make the threat to shoot up Liberty Junior, Junior School on social media to get out of school. According to juvenile to Quinton documents, the threat closed the school for a day. And this is what the detective said in the court complaint. She said she's saying that she, that she sent the threat because she did not want to go to school. The teen spent Christmas in juvenile detention but was released on December 28th and placed on house arrest. A 15-year-old boy was arrested in January 5th at Talawada High School after, he alleged his, after his alleged threat was secured by staff. The teen was charged by Oxford Police with inducing panic, making terroristic threats, and vandalism all felonies. According to court documents, the boy wrote, I will shoot everyone. I'm going to shoot up this school. Don't come if you want to live. Officers say the teen confessed and he hoped to leave school early. The boy remains in house, remains housed in a juvenile detention center awaiting pre-trial hearing before Kathleen Mullins later this month. Magistrates and judges ordered the probation department to Conduct to be, to order the probation department to conduct investigations about the defendants to determine if they should remain in the detention center. 
Clevenger said factors include past contact with the court and probably the repeat offense. So, here, so he was released, but these people were making these threats. I mean, I told you guys before, don't make threats. Making threats, making threats is illegal. It's against the law. And right now, just today, two Taylor students were under arrest, and both were suspected of making separate school threats. It's not clear the student was arrested in different locations. This is a school shooting in Oxford, in which four students were killed. After, interviewing, after the interview, Blair said, many of them said they were just kidding and they didn't mean to do it. The case has been turned over to the Juvenile Court Division. Police not only said he was a online threat, she was taken into custody and transported to juvenile detention center to suspect in this case a 15 year old who was a juvenile. School was resumed as scheduled on Friday. No one was allowed to enter high school until they all cleared position. Again, even people have to understand making threats is illegal, and there there is there are outlines of potential punishments, according to the ArabAmericanNews.com. A twenty year family. I showed you the video earlier this week, and laid out guidelines. If you're going to think about any pranks, I mean, if you think it's a prank. To be threatened to shoot up a school, it's not a prank. You could be arrested. A kid that decides to post threatening messages on social media about bringing a weapon to school as a prank or decides to get school canceled by calling a fake bomb threat could face felony charges in prison time. But what about the very latest on that Ox on the Oxford case? Well, there's no very latest on that, but what we do know so far is that the parent's mom was denied and she rolled her eyes and she drained her bank account, which was harsh. It's unacceptable behavior from this person. I'll be back in a moment. Tomorrow's the day that Oxford students return to this school after a month of the shooting, and tomorrow on Give Me a Break, we'll look at how a new chapter how the school will begin a new chapter for those in the school district. That's all this edition of Give Me Break Sunday. We'll see you again tomorrow for Give Me Break Monday. Happy night, everyone. I'll see you tomorrow. Good night.